Um, I'm a brand new senator. I've been in, in office seven months, and I sat with a number of the cadets, Harold and others, at lunch, and, and I said, do you have any questions for me? And one of the young men said, tell me about the work of being a senator. And I said, well, the work is kind of divided into three chunks. There's the, the work on the floor of the Senate, the debating and amending of legislation. There's the work in committee. Uh, I'm on the Armed Services Committee, the Foreign Relations Committee, and the Budget Committee. And then the third is the work that's not in Washington, but that's back in Virginia. I have six regional offices. My regional office director, Gwen Mason, was with me earlier. I think she's already raced down the road to the next event. But back in Virginia, helping people get their veterans pensions straight, or helping people who are going to get foreclosed on in their home. But one of the things I try to do in that third chunk, the work back in Virginia, is connect with my armed services portfolio. Uh, the armed services committee of the three I serve on is the one that's kind of my real uh, passion. It's the, it's the most important one. It's the one that takes the most time. I, I love all my committees. But armed services in Virginia, we're so connected to the armed services. You know, we're connected, even, even in our map, you know, Appomattox, Yorktown, Pentagon, you know, from 9-11. Our map is a map of American military history. And then you add to that who we are as people. One in eight Virginians is a veteran. When somebody told me that when I was governor and was commander-in-chief of the Virginia Guard, I thought, wow, that's impressive. One in eight Virginia adults is a veteran. And the person who told me said, I didn't say adults. I said one in eight from birth to death is a veteran. And then if you add, not just veterans, but active duty and guard and reserve and DOD civilians who do important work, nurses at, at Army hospitals, DOD contractors who help develop the technology to keep our warfighters safe, if you add all of that up, and then their families, because they live it as well. You're not talking about one in eight. You're not talking about one in five. You're really talking about one in three. Virginians are directly connected to the military. And I'm one of those three. I, I mentioned to some of you when I came in, my oldest son is a lieutenant in the Marine Corps. He's an officer candidate school at Quantico right now and commissioned a little bit over a year ago. And so it is a really, really important responsibility. So when I'm doing that third piece of work out in the state, I always try to touch base with the military mission of our commonwealth. And every community I go to, I can touch base, Colonel, with the military mission. I can go visit a, you know, an Army base like Fort Belvoir in Northern Virginia. I can go visit a National Guard armory in Emporia and talk to families whose guard, uh, you know, husbands and wives in the guard are deployed to, to Afghanistan. I can go to the shipyard in Newport News, a private company, but watch fantastic manufacturing employees build the largest items on planet Earth, nuclear aircraft carriers that will project our defense around the world. Every community I go to, I can touch that military mission uh, and, and hopefully learn things that will enable me to do a better job in the Armed Services Committee. One important part of that mission, and it's important to touch it, is the training of our future leaders because we can have everything else right. You can have the technology right. You can have everything else right. But if you don't have the right leadership, then you're not going to be successful. And so I try to go and visit. Um, whether it's ROTC programs at the University of Virginia, which I did a few months ago, whether it's a great visit to the V Will program at Mary Baldwin, which I did a couple months ago. Um, I try to visit the places where our future leaders are being trained. The last time I was in Waynesboro, um, a couple months back, someone asked, hey, would you have time to go by Fishman Military Academy? And I, I knew about the institution because Governor Belisle, one of your alums, is a dear friend, and I've heard him talk about it, but I'd never visited. And it turned out that that day was not a day that I could make it work. But, but I said, you know, but I need to come because I want to make sure I, I applaud young people who are saying this is the kind of leadership they want to experience and that I learn a little bit about the institution so that I can be helpful in my role in the Senate. And so it's been great to, to come, Colonel Morrison, and, and just have a, a chance to learn a little bit. I know in the room we have cadets. We have great faculty and staff members and administrators. Uh, and we've got parents, parents who maybe have come up a day or so early to get kids moved in. I know part of the class, maybe the early season athletic training starts as early as tomorrow. Um, and I just want to tell you, it's a real honor to have a chance to come and be with you. And, and I feel very connected, even though I don't you know, know all of you. You care about that military mission in the same way that I do. And I, and I feel that's a great connector. It's interesting. I didn't think that being elected to the Senate would transform my relationship with my kids, 
but something about being on armed services has already really changed and deepened my relationship with my oldest son. We have conversations about things that we probably wouldn't be having conversations about if I weren't serving on the armed services committee right now. So the, uh, the, the role in the Senate has sort of not only changed my official responsibilities, it sort of changed the, the, the way I think about things even as a, as a husband and father. Um, I know the parents who are here, you, you know, you care very deeply about your kids. You want them to be educated right, and this is a, as an institution from talking to parents that you feel a real degree of confidence in, and I can see why. Uh, and you also embrace that military mission. Uh, if your child chooses to take the training they've received here and apply it in that way, it's something that you embrace and welcome. Not all parents feel the same way. Uh, I'm sure if you embrace it, you do it with some anxieties. That's, that's natural. I, I feel those, and my wife does too. But we're very, very proud of all young people. In this day and age, you know, we've got to be proud of young people who are interested in, in serving, and that's ultimately the mission here at Fishburne. So, Colonel, thank you for, for letting us come by. And you mentioned, you know, that this will be a day you'll long remember. I, I, I'm not that impressed with myself, and you shouldn't be either. But, uh, but, but it doesn't have to be the only time I'm here. I'm, I'm hoping to do the work for a while. And I, 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 I get on the road a lot. I get to Her Waynesboro quite a bit and into the Valley quite a bit. So I hope that we'll have more opportunities. And one thing I'll offer to you, if you ever want to come up and, you know, do the, the $5 tour of the Capitol, the really good tour of the Capitol, or come up and go to an armed services committee meeting. Now, that might be an interesting thing to see, to, to watch us wrestle with policy questions. I'll say this, in a Congress where we're often divided, the Armed Services Committee is the most nonpartisan committee. It's the only committee that passes a budget every year, like clockwork, others may or may not. Armed Services always will. Um, so it might be interesting sometime if you ever want to come and do that. If, if any of your cadets are interested in service academy appointments, you know, that's something that I work on with Senator Warner. I have a great staffer, Corinne Charles Dongo, who works on that. Highly competitive, as you might imagine. The numbers of people who are trying to get this are huge, but we'd love to work with you on that. And we hire students to do internships, too. So as, as part of the, the, the well-rounding of your, your public service orientation, if there's ever anything we can do for you, either in state or in Washington, just let us know. We'd like to be of assistance. Thanks, Colonel. Thank you all.